Hey dudes, so this is it. Welcome to uh, Sonic City. I've been camping here for about nine months now. Um, as soon as they break ground on the arena, first in line. Oh, I remember that. I was there. No, drop it. Drop it. It's my dog, Detlef. Everyone thinks that I named him after Detlef Shrimp, but um, that's just the name he came with. So, yeah, it gets a little boring sometimes. You know, it's a little quiet right now, but, you know, I got stuff like, you know, weed is legal now, so that keeps me busy. That's about, that's about three days. I'll be busy. Check it out. Rain Man, my Sean Kemp socks. People say, you're obsessed or get a job, you know, and I'm always like, dad, chill out. I'm friends with them, okay? These are my friends. There's me and Sean Kemp, my boy. Look at this one. So you can tell by the photos that I know them for real. Get a light, loser! Where? <laughs> Guy saw a loser somewhere over here. You know, a lot of people say that my pictures are fake and I'm not really friends with the Sonics and whatever, because you know what? I know the truth. Kemp knows the truth. And that's all that really that matters to me is the memories and the key. Hey, man, what, what are we going to eat? Um, what's, what's going on? Are we going to get the fire going? What, what, what Sean, get back in the tent. I'm doing oh, an man. interview. I mean, I just, I'm trying to... The show's it. about the fans. Man, I, I don't understand, man. I mean, just I, wait for me in the tent. From Fremont Studios in the great Pacific Northwest, it's Up Late Northwest with Pat Cashman and Chris Cashman. With appearances by NBA legend Sean Kemp, comedian Ed Hill, and musical guest Taylor John Williams. Now, two guys that read and agree to the terms and conditions, your hosts, Pat and Chris Cashman. Thank you for being here. You know, one of the ways we think we're a different kind of show is that we want to make your viewing experience the best it can be. Yep. So how can we make that happen? Uh, how can we make that happen? Uh, well, first of all, you viewers need to give this program your complete and total attention. Don't mm -hmm. try to fix a snack or change a baby or read a text or mm -hmm. give some dying person the Heimlich maneuver. No. no, keep your eyes and ears right here, yeah. OK? And even if this particular episode happens to be a rerun, you may discover that you missed something that was really good the first time around, so just focus and be patient. The point is, watch the show, even if your friends tell you it stinks. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Those people are not your friends, yeah. okay? Yeah, they stink. And you know what? If you listen to them, you'd be missing our very special guest that's waiting over in the wings. You know, the Seattle Supersonics may be gone for now, but one of their all-time greats, still standing tall right here in the Northwest, the Trailblazers in Portland even got to borrow them for a little while. The one and only, the Rain Man, Sean Kemp is here! <laughs> Cool. It's a goosebump thrill yeah. having having you on our show. Thank yeah. you. Uh, my, my friends told me that the uh, show stinks. Yeah. But you came anyway. Yeah, he came anyways. That That's means a lot good. to us, Sean. Really and you nice. know what? We're glad that you're here for the debut of our brand new Up Late Northwest feature, where members of our audience can win prizes. It's time for the Sean Kemp Quiz. That's That's right. Right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Sean Kemp Quiz, where the correct answer to every question asked wins a fabulous prize. Now, we have two contestants chosen from the audience. Welcome, please, Sonic's guy and Andrew. They're okay. going to be playing. Now, all right. All right. Now, the I winner, won anything yet. I should tell you that the, the, the winner of this game is going to Mazatlan. So, wow. Sean, if you'll verify the correct answers if you hear it, okay. let's get started. Chris? Okay. No Andrew, you won the coin flip, so you'll go first. Here's the question. This basketball player was drafted by Seattle in 1989 and was at the time the youngest player in the NBA. What's his name? 
Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, no, it was not Griffey. He played baseball. The ball is a lot smaller. It's about that big. We're talking about basketball. Um, and again, just to be clear, because maybe we were a little vague yeah. initially. I don't think we were, though. The game is called the Sean Kemp Quiz. Okay, so Sonic Sky, you can just come in and grab the early lead with the correct answer. Sean Kemp. Uh, is that correct? Hell yeah! Okay. 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 okay, Sonic Sky, you take the early lead. All okay. right, uh, let, me, uh, let me serve up the next question on this. The Sean Kemp quiz. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this NBA player not only had the most incredible dunks ever oh. seen, but he's the all-time Sonics career leader in blocks. He had nearly a thousand of them just for the Sonics. Andrew, what is his name? Ah, uh, beats me. I don't... Well, of course he would, but what's the name we're looking for right now on the Sean Kemp quiz? Ken Griffey Sr. Okay. Oh. That was an excellent incorrect guess. Yeah. Sonic Sky, you want to take a crack at it? Sean Kemp? Yeah. Well, okay, it looks like uh, we have time for just one more question on the Sean Kemp quiz. So just one more, Andrew, okay? And remember, you've got no correct answers so far. Sonic Sky has two. We have only one question remaining. Do you even think you have a chance to win? I'm not a quitter. You should think about quitting sometime. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Final question with the Sean Kemp quiz. Sean here Kemp it comes. Quiz. Sean Kemp this quiz. man was known as the Rain Man. He was the only player with the initials SK to make the NBA second team three years in a row. His name is spelled S H A W N K E M P. Just name him Ken Griffey, sophomore. For crying out loud, Sonic Sky, bail us out. Sean Kemp. <laughs> Sonic guys, you, now my friend, are going to Mazatlan. Yes. We've got a $15 gift card for you. Great Mexican restaurant. You'll love, love it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sean Kemp, everybody, stick around. We're coming back without Andrew. Andrew's not coming back. Be like the cool kids and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. It is so cool that Up Late is a local Northwest TV show and that PEMCO is a local Northwest insurance company. Being local matters to our customers. Why so important? Because we live here too. That's the difference. We know you because we are you. So wait a minute, you are us? Yep. Okay, if you are us, then who's our favorite sports team? Uh, the Hawks. Okay, that was easy, but who's his favorite player? Wilson. They are good. Wow. How did they do that? Wow. The following is a paid advertisement for the Starvagenics Extreme Weight Loss Plan. I'm Phil, I'm 37 years old, and I've lost over half my body weight thanks to the revolutionary Starvagenics Weight Loss System. Hard to believe that just last month, I was wearing these massive size 34 waist jeans. Starvagenics makes it easy with their Extreme Portion Control Program. I start off every morning with a hot breakfast. They let me warm up a raisin. And at lunch, I satisfy my hunger cravings with several slices of an almond. It's amazing to watch the pounds melt away. I'm even losing bone density. My friends can't believe it. His weight loss is alarming. Come on, does nobody else notice this? He's starving himself. This is extremely dangerous. Other diet plans take months to work, but with Starvagenics Extreme Weight Loss Plan. Oh, oh, it's a hungry belly. Unfortunately, it's my cheat day, so I get to spoil myself with a serving of vegetable. I can't just sit here and watch my friend waste away. He feels guilty for eating half of an ice cube. Take it from me, Starvagenics really works. They say if I keep it up, I'll be back to my birth weight in time for the holidays. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I smell. Is that muffins? Oh, God, I remember muffins. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Up Lake Northwest. If you're just joining us, 
You missed our special guest, Pope Francis. Wasn't he great? Yeah, Pope Francis swinging by. He, I guess he was in town to check out the Macklemore concert. Right. Came by our show. Cool guy and infallible, by yeah. the way. Yeah, and he's so. the first 78-year-old guy we've had on our show. Well, I mean, if we're not counting the one that's actually a co-host. Okay. Uh, that's really funny. Hilarious, I know. It's very fashionable to make fun of older people. They're not cool. They're not with it. They're not groovy. No, hey, good... Word choice, groovy. Yeah. I guess everything on these TV shows is all about demographics. Got to get the young demo, right? Well, you know, on a late show like this, you need the older people. They're getting up late all over the Northwest. They got to pee. That's true. That's true. OK, all right. Look, don't believe me. Believe this man. Your Uncle Jim is here. Oh, Uncle Jim. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle old Jim. Old. OK, all right. Yeah, all right. Old. Uncle Jimmy Cashman, the world's oldest stand-up comic here on a senior discount, by golly. Yeah. And because I'm a senior, I'll get right to the point, because if I let my mind wander, it's not coming back. <laughs> and why would it want to come back to this head Then in a few months is going to be 81? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, they proved it with the carbon data. So I got this 80 to 100 demographic covered, OK, so these guys won't get sued. But you know, 80-year-old comics are kind of a dying breed, you know? <laughs> I got the shelf life of about a, a, a leaky can of sardines. You know, and I'm sure there's an expiration date stamped on me somewhere. I think it's down here. Because <laughs> I got to get up to pee 80 times a night. I mean, it, and it's not just pee, it's dribble, dribble. You saw Sean Kemp? I can out dribble Sean Kemp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And LeBron James. And my dri dribbles are tougher than his because he doesn't have to dribble with slippery balls. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Brings up another misunderstanding. Does not mean that I'm back in North America when I say I'm incontinent, OK? <laughs> I wanted to do something about it. I wrote to Washington and said, hey, for me, Obamacare. They wrote back and said, for you, Obama doesn't care. <laughs> So I'm stuck with buying my own diapers. But you know, even though I'm 80, I learn something new every day, including this morning. I learned this morning in a dimly lit bathroom, mint toothpaste tastes a lot better than Preparation H. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the, the tubes look just alike in the dark, OK? And actually, when you get past the taste, the Preparation H didn't do a bad job. See, the, the teeth are OK. There's no hemorrhoidal tissue up there. You know? And of course, I'd already made the mistake with the other tube, you know, but, but that's not so bad. In fact, I may be the only one in here with a butt that smells like mint. Anybody else? <laughs> only thing is, <laughs> it really confuses my dog. You know. My brother, yeah. your Uncle Jim, everybody. <laughs> so glad he stopped by. My friends are going to watch this. We'll be right back. Someday your masterpiece will burn, piece by crackling piece. But for now, it stands a monument to sufficiency and pluck, held together only by ingenuity and gravity. Flawless firewood stacker, you are one of us. And you deserve a sturdier kind of insurance company, a Northwest company that's always at the ready and within reach. Pemco, we're a lot like you, a little different. And welcome back to Up Late Northwest. Where is he? Where, uh, where have you been? I was putting Uncle Jim to bed. Okay, well, yeah. that's fine. He's uh, good. Our next guest, comedian, under 81, by the way, whose debut album, Canadian, is now out on iTunes, and he's appearing everywhere around the country. In fact, he traveled from another one tonight just to be here with us. From Vancouver, Canada, please welcome Ed Hill. Ed! <laughs> Oh my God, it's good to be here, guys. It's good to be here. I had, I had, I had a weird few days. Um, I did. Um, I was checking in the airport just the other day. 
Walk up to the counter. Guy looks at my pastor, looks at me, goes, wow, you're big for an Asian. I was like, wow, you're root for a person. And then he saw my face. He's like, oh, man, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're a couple group of people, you're hardworking, and you're small. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're talking about Oompa Loompas, but thank you. Just give me my ticket. I got to go. There's, I'm, there's weird people everywhere. I'm sure you guys met them, right? Yeah, but for some reason, they love to talk to me. I'm like the weirdo whisper. I don't know what's happening. Like, I was at the mall just w- waiting in line for my food, the food court. Guy walks right in front of me, looks at me, goes, hey, Angela? I thought, what? He's like, are you Angela? I'm like, are you okay? Because <laughs> I'm a guy. And he's like, oh, uh, you just look like somebody I know. <laughs> then he just walked away. <laughs> he just walked away. I'm like, you can't end a conversation like that. Because there's a woman out there named Angela who looks just like me. <laughs> and she's okay with it. <laughs> Like 0% of this should be Angela. <laughs> I feel like Angela can do better. I feel bad. I don't know. It's everywhere I go. Everywhere. I want to see a movie lately. Uh, the new Mission Impossible movie. Walked, yeah. Walked in, gave the guy my ticket. Guy goes, sir, can I see your ID, please? I'm like, huh? The movie's rated PG-13. <laughs> so there's a chance that he thought I was 12. I don't understand how I get myself in these situations. I don't understand. Like, I had a chance to do comedy in my homeland, my motherland recently, uh, Panda Express. Um, no, <laughs> that's stupid. I went to Taiwan. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And everywhere I went, people recognized me. And it wasn't because of comedy. It's because there's a viral educational video in Taiwan that teaches people about sexual assault and I look just like the guy in it. <laughs> yeah. So my face is a national Taiwanese symbol for man creep. <laughs> and my brother heard this. He's like, oh, this is hilarious, Dad. We got to find out who this guy is. Let's Google him. So he Googled, and apparently this guy was born a woman. When we got older, he got a sex change and gone to acting. And when he told me this, immediately in my head, I was like, oh, my God. I found Angela. And that's my time. You guys are great. Thank you guys so much. Suzanne Hill. When we come back, the music of Taylor John Williams. Stick around. If you would like to be part of the Uplate Studio audience and plan to be in the Seattle area, please visit our website or send your request to tickets at uplateandw.com. Somewhere there's a line between optimism and just plain crazy. Between, hey, the sun might come out, and, hey, that might be frostbite. But around here, that line can be a little cloudy. Ghost bumped beach bum, you're one of us. And you deserve a better kind of insurance company. A Northwest company that'll never leave you out in the cold. Pemco, we're a lot like you. A little different. (laughs) Uplate is presented by Pemco Mutual Insurance Company. We're a lot like you. First, we want to thank our fabulous guest. His restaurant is opening soon. The Rain Man, Sean Kemp. My sibling, Uncle Jim. And the wonderful Ed Hill. And now, as he's perhaps best known for his successful run in the seventh season of The Voice, this man is impressed with his solo album, Song of a Dead Man. From Portland, here's the Northwest's very own Taylor, John Williams. Good night, everybody. like a soldier but you came up short in all of this your mind is sore from the 
things that he told you when too much thinking about it so you move on to God knows when and find some love that you can share Just enough to watch it fall to pieces that don't look the same at all. But we can make it out of here. It's you I never want to miss. And darling, don't forget that we we're better than. Cause even in the darkest nights, even in the blinding days, I can see you by my side. We're gonna be okay. We'll be okay. I don't belong. Anyone who lives and calls this place their home And you don't belong to anyone to win that me Consideration provided by we build this love just enough to let it fall. 